Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video, uh, which will take us to around the 22nd of uh, April. So we're going into the Easter period uh, within the 10 day time frame now. Uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensemble. So it runs around a couple of weeks. At the very end, there'll be something uh, about the summer. So stick around to the very end of the uh, video uh, for that. Uh, just to say that uh, on uh, Sunday, we're going to launch our latest competition uh, in association with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. So um, we're teaming up with Metcheck again. It's a fifth year running that uh, we've teamed up with Metcheck for a giveaway. I'll announce tomorrow, one of tomorrow's videos, I'll be the uh, weekend forecast of the week 10 day video update. In one of the videos tomorrow, I'll be announcing a prize that uh, we're giving away. This competition will be starting on Sunday and uh, be running right way through to Easter Sunday. So Easter Sunday will be the day that we uh, give away the uh, prize. So you'll find out tomorrow what that prize is going to be. But yeah, exciting times, teaming up with Metchet for the fifth year running and uh, you'll find out tomorrow uh, exactly what we're going to be giving away. And then you'll be able to enter that prize uh, competition on Sunday or from Sunday. Right, so let's get on with the video then. And we'll start off with the central England temperature over 10 days into the month. And maybe a little bit surprisingly, we're coming out above average. It certainly hasn't felt that warm where I am uh, so far this April. I'm right in the central England region. But the stats don't lie. And here we go. We're at 7.4, uh, provisional to the 11th of uh, April, provisional to yesterday. That's an anomaly, a 0.7 of a degree above average. So not a big deviation, actually. It's only just over sort of half a degree uh, above average. If you're at or within half a degree, either of above or below average, you're basically around uh, the average. So we just ever so slightly uh, above average, really. And once we take into account the cold nights we've got coming up tonight and tomorrow night, I suspect by the early part of next week, this will probably be a little bit cold of an average, uh, actually. But then next week, you'll probably start to take off once again. So, so far, this April is looking uh, much closer to average compared to the uh, warm run of months we've had up to now. February coming out over 3 degrees above average, 6.7. And March coming out at uh, 7.8, over 2 degrees uh, above average. So, we had a really warm couple of months in February and March. This April, closer to average so far. GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Looking at Birmingham in the Midlands uh, today. So the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. And uh, we're going to be cold on average now through to uh, the start of next week. So we've got a cold couple of days coming up, particularly notable at night. The nights will be cold and uh, frosty. Now, as we go through into next week, you see clearly we've got a warming trend here. Temperatures lifting up through the course of next week, becoming a lot milder. In fact, as we approach, Sheets, it could actually become quite warm with temperatures going at least into the mid to upper teens Celsius. You wouldn't totally rule out uh, by around Thursday next week. Temperatures going up to around 20 degrees, I don't think. So definitely temperatures will be lifting up a lot through the course of next week. And also pretty dry as well. So uh, we keep this drying train going certainly over the next week to 10 days. There's a few precipitation spikes just there and just there. But I mean, they are really in the minority. It looks like the next week to 10 days is dominated by dry conditions conditions really uh, as we go into the final week of april this period just here there is some evidence it's turning a bit more unsettled because that's right at the very extended range of the uh, gfs and its ensemble so it's unreliable and let's say that for the next week to 10 days there's going to be a lot of dry weather after a cold start temperatures are warming up Right, so not sure what's going on here. There we go. Uh, this is the temperature anomaly taking us from the uh, 12th through to the 20th of April. Still coming out colder than average. It encompasses the cold weekend that uh, we've got coming up, of course. So uh, once we get the weekend out of the way, I think what we're going to find is, uh, I think we'll find that uh, these charts begin to warm up. So by the time we get through to next week, we should see these charts uh, warming up. Precipitation anomalies when it loads up. There we go. Uh, from the 12th to 20th of April, coming out uh, warmer than uh, dry on average, I should say. So uh, significantly dry on average, actually. A uh, very dry week from the 12th to the 20th of April. Uh, and temperatures, I say, a bit on the lowly side, but uh, they're going to start ticking up as well 
over the uh, over the next week. So once we get uh, the weekend out of the way, we'll see those temperature anomaly charts lifting up. Right, this is how the GFS is looking for Monday. High pressure is in over Scandinavia still. We've got the wind coming from an easterly direction, but we're beginning to cut off those cold northeast winds. However, Monday will probably still be quite a chilly day, but by the time we get through to Tuesday, wind direction is definitely more sort of uh, south of these. So temperatures will begin to lift up through the early part of next week. We have got low pressure over Biscay. This low pressure just here. That's trying to push north. It might threaten some heavy showers in the south sometime around Tuesday. But it looks like that low pressure will very quickly fade away through the middle of next week as this high pressure holds its ground over to the east of the country. So that's Thursday next week. Maundy Thursday. We'll see the wind still from an easterly direction generally but the origins of the air as you can see by uh, following, the ice, following the isobars back basically um, we'll see that the origins of the air somewhere down here pushing uh, northwards into the UK. So I think we could see temperatures into the upper teens Celsius by the time we get through to the end of next week. Definitely. Uh, that's Friday. So Again, high pressure is more or less in control still. Low pressure remains around Spain, Portugal and Biscay, trying to threaten heavy showers into the south and southwest. But essentially, we're still under that big ridge of high pressure. So any showers will probably be restricted to the far south and southwest. Into the Easter weekend itself, uh, high pressure remains in control. That's Easter Sunday, 21st of April. Under high pressure, high and dry, bringing lots of fine and uh, probably quite warm conditions. This is, this is increasingly looking like a very, very nice Easter weekend. I have to say, Easter is really dubious over the years and the decades for being a very, very dodgy, uh, very dodgy weekend and bank holiday. But um, this year, it looks as though things could be firing on all cylinders for a very, very nice Easter indeed. That's day 10, which is Easter Monday, 22nd of April. The high-pressure centre by then is more to the west of the UK, but but basically, we're still under the ridge. There's still a bit of dry, fine, and pretty warm weather, I would have thought. Now, just beyond that, the GFS wants to take that high pressure up towards Greenland and tries to pull down this cold northerly wind. We do push some cold air down into the northern country briefly, but most of it actually is going into Scandinavia. So high pressure doesn't quite get up towards Greenland. So an attempt at a big northerly blast there for the final week of April, but actually would just remain under this ridge of high pressure, which keeps it mainly dry and fends off most of the cold air to the north and the east. By the very end of a GFS run, we saw it on the ensembles or in the ensembles, by the very end of a GFS run, 28th of April, we begin to turn a bit more unsettled. But of course, that's two weeks away and it is very, very unreliable. Parallel GFS run starts off very similar on Monday. High pressure in Scandinavia. We're bringing in the winds from the east, but we're cutting off the north of east flow of air, and we're turning more towards south of east. Certainly by Tuesday, the winds are coming kind of like southeast. Is watch out for these showers uh, trying to push up out of France and Biscay. It doesn't look like they'll come to too much through the middle of next week. High pressure strengthens, turning it increasingly dry and warm by the time we get through to east. In fact, that's a chart for Good Friday. It doesn't get better than that high pressure centered right over top of the UK bringing loads of dry and warm weather uh, with it. I think temperatures with that could be reaching upper teens, possibly to 20 degrees Celsius. That high pressure remains rooted over the country on Easter Sunday and indeed for uh, Easter, uh, that's for Easter Sunday and indeed for Easter Monday too. By Easter Monday, the high pressure just beginning to nose out into the Atlantic a little bit. But, I mean, basically we're still under the ridge of high pressure, so very little change. Um, this is looking like it could be a very, very nice Easter weekend indeed. Just beyond uh, Easter, we start to move that high pressure up towards Greenland with a parallel GFS run, similar to what the operational is showing. Although, unlike the operational run, the parallel does actually pull down a direct northerly. So, look at that. We got to Wednesday, the 24th of April, and we're bringing in a direct northerly blast uh, across the country. If you follow the isomars back, look how far north those northerly winds are originating from. They actually go off the chart. So that really is a very, very big northerly indeed. The origins of the air is that right over the top of the North Pole. Hopefully, it won't verify. It's 300 hours away, uh, Wednesday 24th April. I'm not normally biased with these uh, with these videos uh, one way or another, but uh, I would hope that that doesn't verify because, I mean, you're going into the final week of April and 
uh, there will be, if that comes off, there will be uh, impacts in terms of growers and farmers and fruit growers. So that would be very, very nasty for the time of year that normally, if it came off, that would bring snow to the north. Maybe even other parts of the country would be at risk of wintry showers. And uh, you'd also have a risk of, um, most importantly, have a risk of very, very damaging night frost as well. So hopefully the parallel GFS run is off on a tangent. But we did see the operational GFS also going in that direction, although it just failed, really, in pulling down that northerly wind. So I think you have to watch out for it, obviously, but uh, let's just wait and see. In the more extended range, eventually the parallel G GFS does start to cut off that northerly flow. And we begin to pull in a milder west southwesterly by the very end, certainly the 28th of April. It looks like it's turning milder uh, by that point. That's a really big northerly through the final week of April that the parallel GFS is going for there. And if it came off, it would be very, very nasty indeed for the time of year. ECMWF again, we've got high pressure in over Scandinavia on Monday. Winds are in from the east through to Tuesday. We're going southeast with winds, so obviously temperatures are lifting up. Fret some showers in the south around the middle part of the week. Have to watch out for those, but uh, they fade away as we get towards Easter. High pressure increasingly influential over to the east of the country. Uh, in the more extended range, that's Saturday, 20th of April, Easter Saturday, dominated by high pressure, and that high pressure domination goes on into Easter Sunday. And Easter Monday too. Those are really vintage charts, uh, bringing lots and lots of dry and warm weather with them for Easter. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today uh, at day 10, which, of course, is Easter Monday. It's the 22nd of uh, April. This is from the Icelandic Met Office, of course. So we've got 16 members of the ECM ensembles, including the operational run. That's a run we were just looking at that have high pressure centred over top of the UK. So obviously they are dry and warm for Easter. They're pushing the jet stream up to the north. There is another 13 that have high pressure over just a little bit to the south of us low pressure is up to the north they're a little bit flatter maybe slightly more unsettled for the north and west very little in it really there's uh, 12 that have high pressure centered over a little bit to the north of the uk so again they're a mainly dry fine warm easter scenario the jet stream is up there and then finally we've got 10 that have the high pressure over scandinavia to our east and northeast low pressure is out in the atlantic and so these ones are pulling in kind of like southerly to southeasterly winds they're probably the warmest option actually those ones but they might threaten some showers along as well as rain to the west perhaps um you can see quite clearly the ecm is going for high pressure big time for uh east it's just a matter of exactly where that high pressure is sitting now, in two weeks' time, this is around the time frame the GFS is pulling down that big northerly, or the GFS parallel run is pulling down that big northerly anyway. We see these scenarios. This is for the 27th of April, 360 hours away. There's 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our east. Low pressure is out to the west. That low pressure is putting the high end, uh, uh, under threat. It's putting it under some pressure. We're still more or less under high pressure conditions, but it might be starting to turn a bit more settled out to the west. There's 17 that have us basically centred under an area of high pressure, and we're warm with those ones as well. That includes the ECM control run. And then finally, there's 16, a minority option that look like they're trending towards the GFS parallel, actually. They've got low pressure uh, kind of like to the east north east of us they've got high pressure uh, out in the middle of the Atlantic and moving up towards Greenland and they'd be threatening to pull down cold northwesterly or even northerly winds so that northerly that we have within the parallel GFS run I think there are some members of the ECM ensembles that are going for that kind of scenario albeit it is a minority option but we do need to watch out there that normally could be very very nasty for the last week of april if it comes off finally let's just have a quick look at a couple of longer range charts so this how the cfs v2 is currently uh showing the 700 millibar height anomaly for uh showing it for May. 
<laughs> we've got a big area of above average height centered over top of the UK actually uh, with that with below average heights up towards Greenland Iceland jet streams going north so on the warm side of the jet we're under an area of high pressure that would be a mainly dry settled and you would have thought pretty warm May uh, actually if it came off and then finally, I just wanted to show you this. This is the very latest 500 millibar height anomaly from the Beijing Climate Centre for the summer. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly for summer 2019. Look what it's doing. You can't actually make out the UK uh, really, but I can tell you the UK is just there. And it is placing a huge ridge of high pressure right over the UK for the summer. That would be shoving the jet stream north. The jet stream would be going off up there somewhere. And, uh, well, that high pressure is also supported by high pressure in the Atlantic. And it does extend into Central Europe over here as well. So it's a huge area of high pressure there that the Beijing Climate Centre is going for. And it's not that dissimilar from the pattern that we had last summer, can you believe? So if that came off, it's a big if. These long-range models are very unreliable, as we know. But if it came off, that would be a second hot and dry summer, uh, following on from last year's hot and dry uh, summer, of course. So it's food for thought. It's nothing to be particularly excited about at the moment. We're going to do the second uh, seasonal model round for the summer of 2019 in a couple of weeks. That will be the last uh, Saturday of the month. So we'll see what all the other long-range models are going for then. Um, but I thought I'd just include it because it is quite an interesting uh, looking chart with the high pressure well and truly rooted over top of the country for the summer. That would undoubtedly be another hot and dry uh, summer. Back to back, 2018, 2019, will they be a pair of black, uh, back to back hot summers? We'll have to wait a little bit longer to find out. Finally, if you're enjoying the videos and the content at Gazworthy's, please can you consider becoming a patron for Gazworthy's. You can come to the Gazworthy's Patreon page if you would like to become a patron and sign up for a Patreon account. Uh, you can pledge an ongoing monthly donation to Gazworthy's. It can be anything from $1 a month upwards. Got 61 patrons so far, so hello and a big thank you to all of our 61 patrons uh, so far. Thank you so much for... Uh, your generosity and kindness in becoming patrons for Gazworthids. So that's how um, you can become a patron of Gazworthids. Alternatively, you can give a one-off donation through PayPal. And this is the Gazworthids PayPal page. So you just come here, sign into your PayPal account, and then you send through a one-off donation to Gazworthids. Whether you do that with uh, Patreon or PayPal, you will get a shout out in the videos. We'll say thank you very much for your uh, generosity and we'll get your mention in the videos as long as you want one. If you'd rather stay anonymous, that is absolutely fine. Just leave a little note with your donation when you sign up to uh, Patreon and let us know you'd rather not have a mention. And uh, we'll just say something like big thanks to this anonymous uh, donor or anonymous patron. But otherwise, you'll get your mention in the videos and uh, thanks so much to all of you for doing that. Of course, you might want to mention for your website or business. Again, we are happy to do that. We'll even go to your website if you'd like us to and uh, give that a little bit of a plug. So it's how, however you want to do it, really. And uh, we're always happy to um, give you your shout out however you want it. So big thanks to all of the patrons. Big thank you to all of the donors for Gazza. I mean, it's very, very kind. And you're helping us to pay for our content and keep the website online. So thanks so much to all of you uh, for doing that. Right, so that's it for uh, today's videos. Uh, tomorrow, we've got weekend forecast, week 10 video update. I say tomorrow we will have a little uh, plug for the competition. I'll show you the prize that we're giving away in one of tomorrow's videos. And then that takes us through to Sunday when we will be launching that competition in association with metcheck.co.uk. And also, of course, on Sunday, we'll have some more summer analogues. And uh, Gazzo, this Sunday roundup, will be with you on Sunday too. So it'll be a busy day on Sunday. All right, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.